All right, welcome back. Uh, we are continuing with our topic that has to do with honoring God through hard work. Honoring God through hard work. And uh, we're meant to understand using the scripture in um, John chapter 5 that uh, Jesus Christ said that uh, right from the beginning up to now that his father means God has been working and so himself has been working. And he said that whatever he goes to prayer to see what the father is doing, and he comes out to do the same thing. So he never did anything except what he saw. And uh, we have also been meant to understand that uh, uh, we go uh, to prayers, we go to church, we come for a service like this, wherever we go to, to hear the voice of the Lord, or when we are reading the Bible, that what we are what we are doing is receiving inf information, instruction, inspiration from God, and uh, our duty is to activate, put it to work. While we are doing that, we are honoring God. But if we are not doing that, that means we are not honoring God. Uh, uh, I think I think it's good I finished this uh, scripture. Um, let's see, twenty says twenty of that um, John. He said. For the father dearly loves the son and shows him everything that he himself is doing. And the father will show him greater works than this, so that you will be filled with wonder. 21, just as the father raises the dead and gives them life and allows them to live on it, so the son also gives life to whom he wishes. 22, for the Father judges not, judges no one, but has given all judgment. That is the pro, uh, prerogative of judging to the Son, placing it entirely into his hands, so that all, listen to this, so that all will give honor, reverence, homage to the Son, just as they give honor to the Father. In fact, the one who does not honor the son does not honor the father who has sent him. Now, honoring the father here or honoring the son doesn't only mean for us to go in a place of prayer or go to church. It has a lot to do with work. You walk by faith. You also walk. You you also act uh, by physical bringing it to pass. And like I said, that there's no faith that does not have substance. Any faith without substance is not useful on this earth. It is only useful in heaven. And as long as it's heaven, there's no need for, there's no need for faith. Every anointing that does not have a substance or an evidence is no anointing at all. If you also, you have whatever you have, if you don't have an evidence or substance, it is not useful on this surface earth. So he said, if you honor the son, you are honoring the father. Now, in this context that we're talking about hard work, Jesus said from the beginning up to now that his father has been working, likewise himself has been working. So he expects us to walk. If we are walking, we are honoring Jesus. We are also honoring the father. Now, what work are we talking about here? Is it uh, the work of going to church? Or is it the work of what we are doing in our, in our workplaces? Yeah, this is just part of it, but it doesn't end up there. Remember, I talked about three hard works. I said number one is the spiritual hard work, which unbelievers does not have. The unbelievers, they, they work on two. Okay, theirs is mental and physical. But even at mental and physical, they are being successful. They are doing great. Okay, but for us, we have got three. Three dimensions. I like using the this dimension that our sister will always use. Three dimensions. We have the spiritual. Simply means we have got more. We have got more. It's just like having what we call a uh, conscious mind. We have got uh, on the area of mind. There, are, there are about three of them. But a, a carnal man has got only two. One is called the conscious, where you have the five senses. Then you have the subconscious mind, which has which have control over the entire body, has actually 90% control of the entire body. That is subconscious mind. Everything that you do today is as a result of what your subconscious mind is telling you or dictating to you, which I will not go into details today. Then for, for us who are believers, who have got the super conscious, super conscious. So we have got three. The same thing with hard work. Christians has got three. 
One is the spiritual handwork, whereby we go to God to inquire from him, and he gives us revelation. He gives us an insight. He gives us knowledge. What is knowledge? Our kind of knowledge is different from the knowledge of the world. The knowledge of the world is just, uh, it just canal, but our own knowledge is called mystery, mystery, deep mystery, deep things that has not been revealed even to the mind of the unbelievers have been revealed to us. So we have an edge. That is knowledge, actually. Knowledge is no. When you know something, it gives you an edge. When you break knowledge into two, no leads you to having an edge. That's what it means. So we have internal knowledge we have supernatural knowledge number one then with that supernatural knowledge we can bring it down to the mental simply means we have to begin to give whatever we have we have uh, uh, received a mental thought we have to give it a picture we have to visualize it jesus said that whatever you ask in prayer you believe it he said consider it done simply means when you have given it a picture and you have faith that you know what i'm going to receive it one of the problems that we are facing remember i've always said this over and over many believers doesn't have faith even those who have faith does not have uh, um, equivalent feelings it is actually in the area of feeling feeling meaning meaning that you believe you accept that it is done you begin to act you begin to reflect you begin to do things that you have received it that's what jesus said if you know that you have asked and he has heard you you don't need to bother you so he said for sure you are going to have it simply means you have to feel it you have to test it you have to touch it so if you are somebody who believes that god is going to do something for you what do you need to do you begin to see with your inner eyes you begin to touch it you begin to act you begin to react whatever you are doing begins to dance to the tune of what you have believed so we lack in this area so i come back again we we'll go we we'll have we we'll receive a spiritual inspiration from god then mentally we we'll have to do mental hard work put those things into picture like the holy spirit did in the beginning god has every information in his in himself he gave it out to the holy spirit the holy spirit began to brood over the surface of the earth and gave it picture of how the earth was going to be now god now released the world and those things came to pass now, three things that, that happened. God himself had everything himself. The Holy Spirit gave, his, gave it life. The physical uh, world gave it uh, uh, physical natural presence. That is also how our hard work should be. So we receive from God, we we'll give it a mental picture, then we we'll bring it to pass by acting upon it, working upon it. So if God had been working, if Jesus had been working, it is also good for us to work. And these are some uh, scriptures and some few quotations I want to use to back up this. Like I said, I'm not going to take more time today. The Bible says something in uh, Proverbs. It says that the hand of the diligent, what is diligent here? Diligent means hard work. And this hard work, we're not talking about only working hard, physical hard work. Okay, let me show you another, the another quotation here. So for you to understand that I'm not talking about physical hard work. Look at number two here, this one said, if wealth was the inevitable result of hard work and enterprise, every woman in Africa will be a millionaire. You see, so I'm not talking about physical hard work. And I believe that this particular position can resonate with every one of us. Okay, even non-Africans also, it will resonate that this is real that we're not talking about physical hard work here or only about spiritual hard work. There's something missing and I want us to join it together. So this person, George Monbiot said that if wealth, physical wealth was inevitable result of uh, hard work and enterprise, you know, hard working and being uh, industrious, said every woman in Africa, because I don't think there's, there are, I mean, there are, hard-working women in the world like uh, in Africa. Africa has got the greatest so far, but uh, unfortunately they are not the, the, wet, the wettiest or the richest uh, people on earth. So it is not the physical hard work we're talking about. We're talking about combining the three, especially for us Christians. So he said the hand of the hard-working person, the hand of the diligent will rule. Now, what will you rule over? Is it to rule over the people of God? No. Is it to rule over your family? No. Is it to rule over your community? No. This is that one could be part of it. 
but it means to rule over everything, inclusive of money, in inclusive of uh, lack and insufficiency. So if you are a Christian and you discover there's some lack going on somewhere, I think you need to work on it, okay? Where is it that it simply means there are some areas that you're not diligent. I'm also speaking to myself. I'm not speaking to you alone. There are some areas that you're not diligent. You may be diligent spiritually and physically, but you are not diligent uh, mentally. That means you have to work on it. Why did I put this this way? Now, listen to me carefully. If you are hungry, you look for food. If you are thirsty, you look for water. If you don't have a job, you look for a job to, 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 uh, to, to have. If you don't have, if you, are, if you are sick, you look for a doctor, you go to the hospital. Now, also, if you are poor, what do you need to do? You have to do something to it. Okay? Now, poverty, it so, simply means a lack of something. Poverty is not only when you have financial insufficiency, okay? Even when you don't have, mentally, you don't have more enough, you also are poor in that area. In knowledge, if you are poor in knowledge, you are, you are poor. If you are poor in strength, also you are poor. It could be poverty in anything. So in any area where you are suffering poverty, you have to work on it. So like I said, if there are some areas you need water and stuff, you go for it. So if there's also poverty, you have to work on it. But remember, there are three basic things. And this is a law. It says the hand of the diligent will rule. It simply means you rule over everything. Your family, you are not meant to rule over your family, despite that some of you may say I may, I may be contradicting the word of God, but I think it is good for us to lead our families, all right? This is my own terms, all right? I hope you understand me. I, I also believe that you can lead your, 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 your country, you can lead your community, because there's difference, based on my understanding, there's difference between rulership and leadership. Leadership is uh, you showing people how to go about it, okay? Sometimes it could be by your steps, they follow you to do what you are doing or help, you know, doing what you have said they should do. Leadership actually takes somebody from nothing and makes them to become something. Leadership helps people who doesn't believe in themselves to believe of themselves that they can do something. That's what leadership is about. But a rulership is ruling over people, like you know, in the church whereby men of God they rule over the children of God in the house of God. It is not. This is not right. When God was giving dominion to man, He never said dominate man. He never said dominate man. So whenever you see dominion, domin men are dominating one another. Even a husband dominating the wife. It is, it is witchcraft. It is not of God. Okay? So God said, dominate everything in the sky. Dominate the things on the land. Dominate the things beneath the earth. Go back to the scriptures and look at it. He did not say dominate human being. It was only in the time of sin. When sin came, he said, he was talking to the woman. He said, that man shall rule over you. You can discover at that point, God wasn't so happy. All right? But it's God never intended for us to rule over our wives. Men, I'm talking to you here. You are not meant to rule over your wife. You are meant to lead your wife. You are meant to be a priest over your home and not to be a ruler over your home, okay? A ruler is just like a boss. Do what I say you should do. Not teaching the, the student or disciple on how to go about it. So God does not want us to be uh, uh, boss, bosses. But he said in this particular area, he said, you shall rule over. That means money or wrong situation could be coming against you. You rule over it. That means you are subduing the same authority given to us in the beginning. So he said, as long as your hands are diligent, you shall rule over many things. He said, but while the slothful will be put to forced labor. You see that? You see, many of us are in forced labor. Why? The answer is here. Okay? You can say the answer is here. The reason why we are put in forced labor is because our hands are non-diligent enough. You may say, but I work, I work 12, 12 hours, 18 hours in a day. That is forced labor. That is physical hard work we are, you are talking about. You have, not made, you have not taken advantage of your mental work, hard work. Many of you also have not even made, taken advantage of your spiritual hard work. So spiritual hard work, mental hard work, and physical hard work, they work together. Proverbs 22, 29 said, do you see a man skillful in his work? He will serve before kings. 
He will not serve before obscure men. Same thing, skilled, skills. Skills actually is not more of your hands. It's about what you have inside of you. The knowledge that you have acquired, it goes into the brain or into the mind and you begin to act upon it. So he said, a man that is skillful in his work. Now this work, spiritual, physical, and, and uh, mental, three of them. If you are skillful in your spiritual, mental, and physical work, he says that you shall serve, simply means you shall appear, you shall rule together with kings. You know, you become influential. Um, if you read the account of, uh, of Hussein, Hussein Bolt, this guy, he makes only nine, nine um, I think nine seconds um, uh, uh, race and he makes millions. Now consider the number of seconds that this guy has made and look at the amount of money he has made. When you look at the amount of money he has made divided by the number of, of uh, minutes that he has covered, you discover that this guy was making maybe millions or thousands of uh, dollars in just uh, a second. So what is that? Okay, you may say, okay, this is just physical. This guy wasn't working physical alone. He worked mentally. Before he was able to be the Olympian or the, uh, the gold medalist, he actually saw it in his mind. Many of them, they saw this in their mind. And remember I said the unbelievers, they work both ways, mentally and physically. And he was able to achieve this feat. How about you, if you are able to work three ways, spiritually, mentally, and physically? You can imagine where you're going to get to. The next one is Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. It says, a slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent make rich or makes rich. Still the same thing that we're talking about, okay? Diligence, hard work, spiritual, physical, and uh, mental. And it says the lazy person claims there's a lion on the street. Yes, I'm sure. And in lines that said, no, 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 this is not possible. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, money is the root of all evil. Ah, Jesus said it is difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So I want to enter into the kingdom of God. For that reason, I'm not going to work hard. No, 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 no. I don't need money. But you are working for, you are being under forced labor. You are doing minor job whereby you are paid just nothing that, that you can't even survive with. And you're telling me uh, money is the root of all evil. Listen, brethren, money is the root of all evil when you place it above God and above human beings. Inclusive of everything, you are all, everything about you is about money, okay? And you don't care about when, how others feel or what God is saying. That is when it becomes the root of all evil. But money itself, money actually is a piece of paper. It's a piece of paper that is processed. And there's some chemicals and some stuff that have been added to it. That's money itself, okay? It's just peace. So this money is not evil, but it is the attitude that we put towards this money that is evil. Gold is not evil. If you pick up gold from the ground, will you say it's evil? It's not everything that God created, none is evil. As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing that God saw everything and said everything was good. But it is our attitude towards money that is the root of all evil. And I can also add to this, that poverty actually is the main cause of all evil. So if riches above God, above human being, is the root of all evil, poverty also is the root of all evil. Why do you think that men of God keep come up with lying, cheating in the church? It's just poverty mindset. Why is it that you see people going to steal, to kill? It's because of poverty mindset. It's a, it's, it's, it's a mental disease. It is because of poverty. So poverty is, is not holiness. There's no virtue in poverty. So you have to liberate yourself. For you to be, for you to be a blessing to others, really, you have, to, you have to have it. There's nothing wrong in making money, brethren. You have to go for it. Abraham was a hardworking guy. Abraham was a businessman. He was a businessman from his father's place. He came to, he came to Canaan. Things didn't work out you know, in the next 10, uh, 10 years. Now he bought into the, the program of the, of, of the wife and had Isaac. Now remember, the same business mentality, he used it when he got to Pharaoh and when he got to uh, 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 Ahimelech, all right? 
he, he told he told a lie and said, oh, you know what? You can, this is not my wife. He just said that you are not my wife. You are, just, we are, we are, we are, you are my sister. At the end of the day, the Bible said, because of that, he said, Abraham was blessed. Go back and read that scripture. Pharaoh gave him a lot. He gave him camels and all that and all that. He said, for you, I give you this. For your sister as well, I give you this. So he came back loaded. The second time, the same thing. Just remember, uh, Abraham will consider more of the faith of a thing. But when you look at the negative part of him, he's not, he's not a perfect human being. Likewise, I'm not perfect. But nevertheless, it is the, um, the, the, the faith aspect that we are looking at. So he was an industrious guy. He worked so hard. How about uh, Isaac? Isaac wanted to do what his father did when there was famine in the land. But this guy was hardworking. He learned from his father. You can see Abraham learned from God. Isaac learned from his father. He was hardworking. He was never told on what to sow. You know, pastors will say, uh, uh, Isaac sowed in the time of famine and uh, he received a hundredfold and all that and all that. What did he sow? It was his work. He was a farmer. He sowed seed. But because of the favor of God, he reaped harvest. He didn't go sowing money. I'm not telling you don't give money. But it is not about the money. The money that you give will only give you a favor, an open door opportunity for you to work and make money. That money cannot give you anything in return as physical. You see, it has gotten to trade by butter. You give this money, you have this. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. It is not true. When you give that money because you are obeying the word of God, opportunities comes, ideas will come. That is when the open heaven comes. Money will not, throw, will not be thrown down to you from anywhere. Don't buy into any of those lies. If somebody will tell you, begin to see miracle money in your account, forget it, it's a lie, it's a scam. Want that money that you have given, either to the man of God or to whomever as you are led, not manipulated. Because the one you are manipulated, I'm sorry, I don't think you're gonna, you may receive anything on that, okay? That's manipulation. But God knows how to reward you. But the one that you give freely in your heart, you know this is the work of God. You are using to bless the work of God to make sure the work of God goes. You are going to open doors will come, ideas will come, favor will come. It will only trigger opportunities for you to work and make extra money. But for you to see money in your pocket or money to just flow like that, it is not possible. It's it's it, it, it's come. It is not. It is not true. So we need to get this right. So it says that the lazy man will always tell you, you know what? There's a um, what lion out there? I'm sure it's not true. There's no lion anywhere you go for it. So Abraham was hardworking. Isaac was hardworking. What happened to Jacob? Jacob was hardworking as well. You see, throughout the, the, the train, they were all hardworking. And everything they worked for, they received. So we also need to work hard. Very important. Then this other one, this Proverbs 26, 14 says, as a door turns on its hinges, so does a sluggard on his bed. You know, you plan, okay, I'm going to wake up at seven o'clock. I'll pray by eight o'clock. I'll start, I will do some, I'll program my day, how it's going to be. Then by 8.30, I'll go to work. After work, I come back, I'll do this. Now what happens? By 7.30, your, your, your alarm rings, you shut it down. Oh, no, what, 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 what? You wake up, you pick up your phone, you are checking uh, Instagram and what and what. No time, no time for God. You jump to work. No, you have not done your, your spiritual work. You have not hard work. You have not done your mental hard work, but you go straight. You are doing your physical work. What happens? You are going to forced labor, forced labor. So you turn on the bed like this, like that. The same way the door goes up, it closes. It said that's the way that the lazy man operates. Next one is there. This is, this is somebody from a name. It didn't call you that. He said uh, do or do not, there is no try. You know, there are two words that Christians have adopted to by the grace of God. When they tell you by the grace of God, just, just, for, you to, just for you to release them, it simply means, excuse me, okay? I don't want to continue with you in this. I, in short, I will not do it. Or somebody will tell you, I will try. You know, I've gotten to a point when somebody tells me I'll try, I tell you, please, don't tell me how you try. It's either you do it or you don't do it. Okay, it's as simple as that. I don't like that statement anymore. Tell me by the grace of God, I don't like that statement anymore. 
Okay, it's not that I don't believe in the grace of God. The grace of God is there already. Somebody also said this, a preacher said, what differentiates a man distinguishes a man from the other, a successful man from the other. He says it is not miracle. It is not God's favor. He said it is not uh, a grace. He said it is not luck. He said it is self-discipline. And I believe him. He's a preacher, actually. Why? I'll tell you. Miracle doesn't happen always. It happens when you have exhausted your strength. That is how God made miracles to be. All right? Because Adam never enjoyed any miracle in the garden because he was working. Miracle is when you have exhausted. This is something that beats the law of nature. Okay, when you have exhausted your strength, the miracles happen. All right, you don't have money in the, in the house, you don't have anywhere to feed. Uh, what happens? Miracle happens. That's when you begin to expect miracles. But when you have money in your pocket, you're supposed to go out there, you have strength, you're supposed to go out there to go and work and make money. You don't go out there, forget it. There's no miracle, forget it. Because God will not violate His word. Okay, so miracles does not happen always, it happens only for a reason. Luck also, it happens like that. Look, I don't, we don't really believe in luck, but we believe in favor, okay? Favor also comes to those who work hard, okay? If you don't work hard, how do you expect favor? Favor is attracted. Then how about uh, 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 grace? Grace is there. Grace simply means unmerited. What I have today is unmerited. What you have is unmerited. So it's all unmerited. It's out there for everybody. So if it's out there for everybody, it's miracle also doesn't happen just like that, often to everybody. If luck also doesn't happen to people just like that, if uh, favor also doesn't just happen uh, just like that, simply means it is common to everyone. But the only thing that will differentiate you from the other person is self-discipline. That self-discipline does not go outside hard work. It is also hard work. Self-discipline actually is a mental hard work. So it's either you do it or you don't do it. Don't say, I'm going to try. Okay. And if you look at the word success, the second word is you, you. So bring in yourself there. Whatever, if you're successful, is about you. Okay. And whatever God has placed in your heart. If you're unsuccessful, it's also about you. If you want to influence people, it's about you. So it is better you develop yourself to be able to help others. How do you, how do you help people? How do you love somebody if you don't love yourself? It's what you have that you can give. Then this other one says, you get what you work for, not what you wish for. You know, we, we wish sometimes we pray as we pray and we say God has not heard. God has heard every prayer that we have made, God hears. But the point is that uh, he gives an answer at, his, at the right time when he wishes to do that. But if you're working using the law, the first law that we we'll have here, the hand of diligence will rule and uh, the slothful is put under first labor. labor. Really, when you pray, when you wish, you have to work. Okay? It is not something you just keep and leave it there. The last one is don't stop when you are tired. Stop when you are done. I like this statement. You know, um, tired, getting tired is about mental, uh, it's mental work or mental tiredness. If you see those who are like uh, wrestlers or all that, you see them fighting, some of them are bleeding, some of them, their faces are blown up, but you still see them fighting. Why? It's because their mind is telling them you can defeat, you can succeed, you can do this, you can do that. So don't give up, keep on working hard, all right? Uh, don't, uh, don't stop until you, you are done. I don't believe in retirement. I don't also believe that I'm gonna retire. I believe that I'm gonna finish my work. Jesus finished his work and left. The same way I'm going to finish my work and hand over to others. So I'm not going to retire. Then this other one, let me just finish with this. Opportunity is missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and looks like work. An average African does not want to work or they don't want to hear hard work. They tell you that a day of favor is more than 10,000 years of labor. And that's the, that the idea. That is the gospel that have been, that have been sold to us and we are taking it. You can see it's not working. Okay, hard work is important. It comes most times, most of this success and all that they come as overall, they are dressed in hard work. But a, a very few says it. And somebody said also that, you know what, if you want, uh, if you want to deny an African a secret, write it in a book. That's the truth. An African doesn't want to read. They don't want, they, are, they need the fi a fi quick fix. If you give them quick, quick fix and it's money, bring money and you have it. 
they go for it. But if you tell them read it in the book, they tell you they will not read. Many of many of Africans don't read. But most of the secret that makes these people who they are, they are already in the book. Some are well-educated Africans, but they don't read. But that is where most of this is. Hard work be talent, this I know. Hard work will never betray you. So it is good for us to work hard. Uh, if Jesus himself worked hard, if his, uh, if, uh, his father worked and uh, he's telling us to work, it is good for us to work working hard, making sure that uh, we become uh, a blessing to our generation and also generation to come. 